It's a company that plenty of us are familiar with, and Netflix had a great run off the March lows to all-time highs in 2021 in January, but has the streaming company's stock price run out of steam? I thought it'd be interesting to do an update uh, on Netflix, one of the stay-at-home stocks that has been in focus um, over the last 18 months or so. It did trade um, briefly below $300 in March of last year, 2020, then um, got up to almost $600 in January of this year. But since then, um, we've not seen much in the way of progress. We're, We're stuck in something of a trading range. So I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at Netflix, um, given the fact it's been going broadly sideways for some time now, and see well, well, which way might this uh, stock break out? Are we going to see further gains? Or actually, have we seen a major top for Netflix already this year? So as usual in this video, I'll talk about some of the recent news around the company, then we'll come back and take a look at the technicals in a bit more detail. Hello, I'm David Jones from Capital.com, and this time around on the Stocks Channel, I thought we'd take a look at um, a big household name, Netflix. Hasn't been the best performer this year, but more of that in a second. So as usual in this video, uh, I'll talk a bit about some of the recent news, the earnings, we'll look at the levels to watch, then we'll jump back onto the platform, take a look at the charts in a bit more detail, and see where the opportunity might be. As usual, if you're watching this, and you haven't subscribed, if you could click on subscribe. It does help support the channel. It's a new channel for us, and it means we can continue to push out, hopefully, lots of interesting uh, stock analysis throughout the week at the various individual stocks we look at. Right, let's get into it and take a look at Netflix in a bit more detail. So just in case you are unfamiliar with uh, Netflix, it's a streaming video company founded back in 1997, although, of course, It wasn't doing streaming video then. Its original business model was um, DVD rental um, through the post. That's how Netflix started off. The company came to the market in 2002, which I must admit, I was quite surprised. It's been around for quite some time as a publicly traded stock. So almost 20 years you've been able to buy shares uh, in Netflix. We saw the share price hit fresh all-time highs in January of this year. But the latest earnings were a bit disappointing. We had latest earnings from Netflix in July. Um, The expectations were for earnings of around $3.16 a share. They missed um, those expectations. Actual earnings for Netflix came in at $2.97, so about 5% below expectations. Where they did um, exceed expectations was in the number of subscribers taken on in the quarter. So they added... Um, something like one and a half million extra subscribers, taking its global number of subscribers to around 209 million people uh, using Netflix around the world. The share price did really well from the March 2020 low, the big sell-off we saw in stock markets, to January 2021. We saw the stock price of Netflix um, double during that period in under a year. And of course, It was part of the group of um, so-called stay-at-home stocks that did well out of the the lockdowns that we saw as a result of coronavirus. Clearly, more people staying at home, more people looking for entertainment at home, um, was uh, saw saw plenty of these opening up accounts with Netflix. But the year to date hasn't been so good. So since those all-time highs in January 2021, if we look at 2021 as a whole, the stock is up but only slightly. And we are seeing it, uh, Netflix, clearly coming under increasing pressure from the likes of Disney Plus, uh, for example, in this in the streaming space. So what does this mean for the stock? Um, have we seen the best for Netflix? Is there more to come? Let's take a look at the levels to watch. Then we'll jump onto the platform and take a look at the charts. So we're in a bit of a sideways range at the moment uh, for Netflix. The most immediate hurdle on the upside, it's not too far away. It's around about $558 a share. Then on the downside, we've got support coming in around 507 uh, a share. So we've got a fairly reasonably tight range for Netflix. You'll see it on the charts in a second. Are we going to see it break out? Are we going to see it break down? Um, let's take a look at the charts and uh, see what the technical say for Netflix. So let's start things off as usual with our moving average. So a 20-day moving average. Moving averages work well when the market is trending. We get a buy signal like back here uh, in March, third week of March 2020. 
as the price moved above the 20 day moving average. And then we had uh, the run up a few uh, little sell signals uh, on the way. But over, well, the last, I suppose, at least this year, you can see because the stock has been going sideways, um, the price and the moving average are very close together. So we get um, just uh, the price and the moving average flip flopping, buy and sell signals, uh, not particularly useful when a stock or a market is going sideways. But just for the record, the last signal we had uh, on Netflix was uh, over the last week or so. We've seen it move above that moving average, which was sitting around $515 uh, for the stock. So the last signal we had uh, was a buy signal. But clearly, we do have some problems just above where we are now. We'll come to those in a second. If we take a look at the RSI, RSIs uh, perform better. Oscillators overbought, oversold perform better when markets are sideways. That's what we've had uh, for Netflix. We have seen, because of the rise um, over what the last last week, we have seen the RSI, this is a 10-day RSI, go overbought. Uh, it's pushed above 70%, suggesting that perhaps for now, the stock has gone far enough. It's got a bit overheated. The last time we had an overbought signal was towards the end of June. The stock did push higher after that. It took a while to roll over, but it did eventually uh, do that. And then we jumped back to the previous overbought signal that was on the, the all-time highs set in January of this year. So it is suggesting that perhaps at the moment, because we've moved near the top of the recent range, um, that we could see the stock start to run out of steam. Let's see how it plays out over the next few days and weeks. So from a price action point of view, what do we have? Well, we have a stock that is stuck in a range. We saw highs for Netflix in July of last year. So um, it had a really strong run from March to July last year. It did poke out very briefly for a couple of days in January this year, pushed out to fresh all-time highs, but um, it ended up being something of a false breakout because it fell into the range. So on Netflix, you know, broadly speaking, the range runs for me, from the September 2021 lows, around about 457 for the stock, and the top of the range, those all-time highs coming in around 593 uh, from January of this year. So we have this broad sideways range. So I think it's definitely more of a, a trader's market rather than a, a buy and hold at the moment, I think, because we have seen that trend uh, run out of steam. I think for things to get a bit more interesting, from a trend point of view, you know, a breakthrough 600 could suggest that perhaps the next leg higher uh, is starting. We've had more recent support since May of this year uh, at 475. So again, traders have been using weakness back to 475, 500 as perhaps something of a buying opportunity. But you can see why, you know, we could well be running into some problems uh, in the days ahead. We've had highs from Feb at 566. Then we had highs in April at 563, uh, the more, more recent high from mid-July, 565. So this whole 560, 565 area has been something uh, of a problem for Netflix. So at the moment, not too much to suggest this range uh, is going to change. You know, it, it would be good to have a breakthrough 600, then things start to look a bit more interesting. We can start having more aggressive upside targets. You know, on the downside, I think it's only if the sort of 450 to 475 lows get broken? Do we have to worry about a, a deeper sell-off? So perhaps for now, we're going to expect more of the same, more of what we've had broadly, well, for almost, well, actually for, for the best part of a year now, we could say the stock has been going sideways. So um, we'll come back to it in the weeks ahead, see if things are changing. But for now, uh, still something of a range-bound stock and outlook for Netflix. That's it for this update in Netflix. We'll come back to it uh, in the weeks ahead, see if it manages to shake off this sideways range one way or the other. But for now, from me, David Jones and Capital.com, we'll leave things there. Good luck with your investing. For more trading videos just like this, please subscribe to our channel.